lot of like the amount of times I say like is so freaking annoying like see oh my god <clears throat> eee, pump the brakes no not a fan everybody it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my April 2021 wrap up I read a total of 20 books this month which is insane to me because I did not think that I was gonna get any reading done this month but I ended up having exam week in the month of April and all of our exams are online because of the pandemic so I pretty much only had like 20 minutes of class every day so i had a lot of time to read and then after that i just decided that i wasn't going to do any of my schoolwork and i was just going to read since i read 20 books i will be splitting this up into four different wrap-ups because we all know i love to ramble and if i did all 20 books in one then this video would be six hours long so this is part one of four i will leave all the other ones linked down below once they're uploaded so check them out if you want to see the other 15 books that i read this month but these are the first five so without further ado let us get started I've decided that I'm just going to do all of the like net galley arcs that I read in this wrap up and then one physical book just because it's easier on me for editing so the first book that I read for my net galley arcs is The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars after a deadly fly flu Nico and her dog are some of the only survivors she sets off on a journey with this dog in order to find a mystical portal that her father used to tell her about in stories when she was younger. Along the way, she meets other survivors, including a young boy named Kit and his friend Lennon, and they also learn a little bit more about a mysterious person that they call the Deliverer, and it's like the story of that. This book was very interesting, but also very confusing. You are thrown into this world without much of a backstory, and you're trying to piece things together as you're reading. As you do read, there is more that is revealed with each chapter, but leading up to those reveals is just a lot of work on your part trying to figure out what the heck is happening. I do think that this book was a little bit slow with not a lot of action happening for the majority of the book so I was a little bit bored for a lot of it. The book is also very surreal to read during a pandemic because a lot of the things surrounding this fly flu are things that are happening in our world right now so it was a little bit not fun for me to dive into a pandemic book when we're in a pandemic so you know if you're gonna read that maybe keep that in mind. <laughs> the book is told in three points of views, Kit's, Nico's, and this deliverer that you learn more about while reading. I did like reading from all three perspectives. I love Kit. He is like a little cinnamon roll and I wanted to protect him at all costs. The Deliverer was also a very interesting character but I was able to call their identity pretty early on in the story so that kind of sucked for me but overall I do think that a lot of people will enjoy this story. It was interesting. It just wasn't like my favorite thing that I read this month so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next NetGalley arc that I read was Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. I give this a 4.5 out of 5 stars I really liked this one. This follows 18 year old Donis who is of mixed heritage so that makes her feel very out of place on the Ojibwe reservation. She witnesses a murder and then agrees to become an undercover informant for the FBI surrounding a lot of drug related deaths that are happening in her community and it's like the story of that. I actually really like this one. I think that it was a very interesting read. I went into it pretty blind and I definitely suggest that you do that as well. Pretty much all I knew about it was that it was deeply entwined with native culture and had something to do with meth and it was such a wild ride. I really liked how this was set in Canada because I don't really read a lot of books set in my home country so it was a lot of fun to be able to like pinpoint certain Canadian cultural things that you don't really see in a lot of books. I also really liked how the author sprinkled in a lot of native traditions, culture, language, and history in a very subtle way. Donis was definitely my favorite character. I think that she was very complex and very interesting to read from. I also like how the book explored a lot of different topics like sexual assault, addiction, grief, abuse in a very sensitive way. I was so invested in trying to figure out who was behind the drug crimes that were going on. 
I did end up figuring it out, but it didn't hinder from my overall enjoyment of the story. I was not the biggest fan of the romance in this book. I wish that it just was not a thing, but I did like where it ended up in the end, so I can't really complain too much. Overall, I definitely recommend everybody check out this book because it was really fun to read. So yeah, 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next book I have is another 4.5 out of 5 stars. It is Lost in the Never Woods by Aiden Thomas. I really liked this one as well. A few years ago, Wendy and her two brothers, John and Michael, went missing. The only one to return from the woods was Wendy. Now other children are going missing and people are turning to Wendy for any clues about where these children may be going. Unfortunately, Wendy has no memory about her time in the woods or what happened to her two younger brothers. When a boy named Peter from her childhood stories shows up in town, her memories start to return and it's like the story of that. I didn't read Cemetery Boys by this author, but everybody hyped that book up so hard on booktube, so I was pretty intrigued with this author's writing. I'm also a big sucker for fairy tale retellings. I've never read a Peter Pan retelling, but I absolutely love the original story, so I was very intrigued to see what this was all about. I personally love how dark this story got. I love the twist that the author threw in about Peter's shadow. I was so invested in that aspect of the story. I do think that the pacing was a bit slow for the majority of the story which is why I did end up dropping half a star. At the beginning, I was a little bit bored, not gonna lie, but as the story progressed, I did become more and more invested in it. I really liked the exploration of grief in this and how everybody handled it in very different ways. I think that the author did a great job exploring that. I also took off half a star because I do think that the characters are a bit one-dimensional. I also was not the biggest fan of the romance. I think that it could have been left as a platonic relationship and the story would have literally been the exact same so I mean there is one aspect where like the relationship does make sense but still not the biggest fan of it so you know take that as you will but yeah I really enjoyed this 4.5 out of 5 stars the final e arc that I got from NetGalley is was not to love I'm totally gonna have to read the author's name because it is so freaking long because there's two of them but it is Emily Wiberly and Austin Sigmund Broca I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars it was not my favorite so this follows Alison Sanger who has been arch rivals with Ethan Malloy for pretty much as long as she can remember they have been fighting for valedictorian since high school v Began. If it was up to Allison, she would avoid him at all costs, but unfortunately for her, they have all of the same classes, they attend a lot of the same extracurricular activities, and they have this goal to make it to Harvard. So when her principal asks them to help plan the high school tenure reunion coming up, they are very hesitant to accept until she says that it will look very good on their Harvard applications and a letter of recommendation may be produced if they help. Out. So as they begin to spend more time together, their rivalry turns into something else, and it's the story of that. This is an enemies to lovers book, which I am usually a huge sucker for that trope, but these two characters drove me absolutely crazy. I could not stand them together because they were just very immature and annoying. It was really frustrating because they are meant to be high school seniors, which means that they are 17 or 18, and the way they acted was more like freshmen. I probably would have enjoyed this if they were freshmen, but when I found out that they were 17 or 18, I was like, E pump the brakes. No, not a fan. I really liked Allison's parents. I think that they were a lot of fun and very supportive of Allison, even when she was a little bit of a jerk. Also, big fan of Jamie, who is Allison's older sister. Did not like the way that Allison treated her, and it just made me uncomfortable for a lot of it. Like, I'm not gonna lie, my favorite character in this book was such a minor character as the driving instructor. Like, I would have rather had an entire story about him and his like side plot which wasn't much of a side plot but like if you read the book you'll know what I'm talking about rather than Ethan and Allison which says a lot because he was a very minor character. Honestly, the only reason I'm giving it a 3 out of 5 stars was because of the exploration of the different paths that life can take you and how not one of them is like the right path. It was really interesting to read about but these characters just down the drain for me. <laughs> the final book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up is Glitter by April Lynn Pike. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. So this book follows the people of Versailles who 
live life like they are in an 18th century court, but with the bonus of advanced technology. When 17-year-old Danny witnesses a serious crime done by the king, her mother ends up arranging a marriage between the king and Danny in exchange for their silence. Danny fears for her upcoming life with the king and she wants nothing to do with this scheme, so she has six months to produce enough funds for an outside source to help her escape. With the help of an unexpected friend, Danny turns to drug dealing a new product called Glitter in order to gain these funds and it's like the story of that. I honestly did not have very high hopes for this book. I went into it thinking that it was probably going to be like a three star read at best, but I was very pleasantly surprised with this. Right from the prologue, I was so invested in Danny and her escape plan. The biggest complaint that I think I have about the book and why I did drop a star was because there isn't much backstory given. We are basically thrown into this world. We know that it is a futuristic Versailles, but the people act as if they are in an 18th century court, and there's advanced technology, which I personally think was the best part of the story. It was so interesting to read about all the technology available and what it could do. So like I said, I think that the concept was very interesting, but I do wish that we had a bit more of a backstory. I really like Danny as a character, although some of the things that she chose to do were was very, very frustrating, and I definitely do not agree with them. She was definitely a very morally gray character. She was very naive, but also very clever at the same time. I just think she was really interesting to read about. I mean, I do understand why she did some of the things she did because she was so desperate to escape the sadistic man that she was supposed to be married to. She's also in a very abusive relationship with her mother. She was definitely selfish. She definitely did not think of the consequences of her choices, but again, I do understand why she was so desperate to get out. Saber was also one of my favorite characters in this. I definitely had my heart broken for him a couple of times. When I started the book, I definitely was not a fan of the romance. I did not like it at all, but as I kept reading, they definitely grew on me and I did end up liking them in the end. I was rooting for them pretty hard. We're left on a pretty big cliffhanger for this, so I'm definitely intrigued about where the story is going to go next. Unfortunately for me, it's not available on Amazon or Indigo. It's like sold out. So I'm on the hunt for this book, so if you guys have any like leads on where I can get the second book, which I believe is called Shatter, then hit me up, let me know, because I need it in my life. All right, everybody, so that was my part one of this four part wrap up. I will leave the rest of the links down below as they continue to be uploaded. So if you're interested in seeing the other 15 books that I read this month, definitely check those out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!